First of all, I must thank Haverhill Town Council for the facility of the Art Centre this evening. And by the way, Haverhill Town Council have been very supportive of our rail project for a long time. We're very, very grateful. Let me just tell you how things have gone in the last 20 years. I say 20 years. Um, we began when I myself, sorry, I should tell you who I am. I am Malcolm Hill, the chairman of the Cambridge to Colchester Rail Project. We began when I was a, an infant pensioner. I retired after 40 years working to be a pensioner in 1994. And only a, a few months after that, um, something happened. Something happened between South Wales and West Suffolk. Because I was in South Wales in the early 1980s and saw a lot of unemployment, especially with the closing of the mines. And I felt that, that tourism could be a, a great asset for that part of the world. And I suggested that there, there should be a, 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 like a big dipper up and down the valleys uh, to, to go right from east to west, beginning at Fishguard and coming over to, um, uh, to Gwent. I later came to Sudbury in 1988, and in the 1990s I found a similar situation, perhaps not as bad as South Wales, but in some of the wards in Haverhill, Sudbury and Great Cornard, there were 10% of people were out of work. And it seemed to me that something should be done to try to provide more work. And I personally felt that the railway would be one of those means. I wrote about this in the paper. And the first person to pick it up was a schoolboy from Samuel Watt, Samuel Watt School here in Haverhill, a boy called George Rose, who lived in Clare. And he asked me to go and see him, and I went to see him, and we talked about it. And he said to me, why don't you tell other people about this idea of a railway from Fishguard in the west to Harwich in the east, a South British Scenic Railway? which would be, pick up many, many important parts of our country. And so I, I wrote again in the paper saying, would anybody like to support this idea? And six people turned up uh, in the Christopher Centre in Sudbury, and one of them was David here, who is our tr secretary and treasurer, who has been uh, with us w from the very beginning, mm -hmm. and others also. And so we began investigating. How could the railway be put back between Sudbury and Cambridge via Haverhill. The first thing that we had to do was to have a look at the line previously. What was, what was left of the old line which clo closed in 1967? And so half a dozen of us started to walk along the line. Most of us were pensioners and it looked like, you know, the uh, last of the summer wine, compo, etc. You saw these three or four old men walking in the countryside. But we had a purpose. We wanted to look at the old track. And so we made our own investigation, walking many miles along it. But then we felt we ought to have a professional look at this situation. And so we employed a transportation uh, civil engineer. And he came and did a, a pre-feasibility study. And his conclusion was that although there were some points which were, would be very, very difficult, generally speaking, the line could be put back. In those days, he estimated the cost would be £49 million between Sudbury and Cambridge. Remember, that was back in the 90s. His report actually was, was produced in 1999. Now, the specification of the railway, which uh, we talked about with him, was as follows. It's important that you realise what we're about. We want to have a full standard gauge rail line linking into the national network. A double track formation at least between Cambridge and Haverhill. Trains powered by electric overhead lines. Catering for the needs of the public from early morning to late at night. Integrated with buses to give virtually door to door travel for residents of city, towns, and rural districts. And the dual use of passengers and freight, which would reduce overall costs. So that's what the railway we, uh, we had in mind. Well, after the report in 1999, we wanted to take this to the local authorities, which we did, and we had meetings with them. They praised what we had done, but said there was no money to do anything. And so this has been the tale of, of things since then, by and large. However, somebody said to us, 
it's all right you having ideas about a railway, but do the people of Hayfield and Sudbury and Cambridge really want this railway? And one of uh, your local councillors, Councillor Jeremy Farthing, said to us, you have to have a petition. And so we began work on a petition, standing in the centre of Haverhill, in the, in the High Street, in uh, Sudbury, uh, near the Town Hall, in Clare, and so on. And we began to collect the signatures. And in the end, over a two-year period, we collected over 12,000 signatures in favour of the railway. So we realised there were a lot of people who wanted the railway. Again, we took this news to local authorities and we took the uh, petition itself to the Minister of Transport, John Speller, as he was then uh, in London. Again, we were received very well by the councils and by the Minister, again, but the, the reply was, yes, you've had good support, but I'm sorry, we've, we haven't any funds to uh, put the railway back. Well, what could we do then? Well, nextly we thought, well, let's have a, a, a professional market research. Let's find out uh, through a professional survey just how many people uh, along the track would wish to have the railway put back. And so the survey was done. And the result was very favourable. Sorry, 73.4% of the people who were interviewed said that they would like the railway, they, they said what sort of railway they would, would like to use, how much they would like to pay for travel and so on. So it was a very thorough research and very much in favour. We took it back again to the uh, local authorities and again the reply came, sorry, no money. So what to do next? Well we thought we'd better in the meantime, make some detailed investigations. Remember, we're coming up to the time of a very bad recession. And uh, we, uh, in, in 2006, again, we employed a, a, a transport engineer, Dr. Stephen Aids, to look at the, particularly at the, um, the condition of the uh, a possible line between Haverhill and Cambridge, especially around Bartlow and uh, uh, where the... Um, a11 and the A50 uh, would uh, 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 cross the former line, uh, where, you know that, uh, near Pampisford, where there would have to be probably a, a, quite a, a large bridge to take over the, those very important roads. And again, he, he, his study showed that there were ways in which the railway could be put back. There were some constraints, but the, the railway could be uh, it reinstalled. So we come to 2009. Now, in 2009, the Association of Train Operating Companies, people like uh, Abellio, who run the, um, the um, Greater Anglia line, the, these people produced a report. They had, they'd had a survey of, of all the towns in Great Britain which didn't have a railway or didn't have a station. There were 72 locations that they studied, and they reported back on their findings. Haverhill was the 36th in line. 35 places more important than Hayfield. We, we disagreed, of course, but uh, because uh, we, as far as we could see, you know, there's no railway within 15 miles of Hayfield uh, in, any, in any direction. And we feel that ours ought to have been further. Other people, places were rather nearer to other, other tracks. Be that as, as it may, one of the things that the uh, train operating companies said to us, that their estimate was that the railway between Haverhill and Cambridge would cost about £150 million to construct. So we come now to 2011. We changed our name then because we felt we ought to stress that this line would serve everybody between Cambridge and Colchester via Haverhill and Sudbury. So we changed our title to the Cambridge to Colchester Rail Project. And we, again, asked for a, a new uh, presentation, which we did, the, the case for a renewed railway between Cambridge and Colchester. And this was sent to, uh, around so we could tell everybody exactly what we, what we had in mind. The next thing to do was to ask, what would it cost to have a proper engineering study? How could the railway, a railway actually be built between Cambridge and Haverhill. 
and how much would it cost to have the proper, uh, a full feasibility study. And we, we gained two. We, we asked for three um, uh, quotations. We gained two. And to long, cut a long story short, the, one of them was £20,000, the other one was £45,000. One was a more local firm, the other was a, a, a big national firm, which often has a, 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 a larger amount. However, somewhere around just below £50,000, because this was, I must stress, was 2012. We're in 2014, costs will have gone up. Um, so that is the situation as far as the engineering is concerned. But the other thing that ha you have to do, you have to have a business case. You have to find out whether the railway would pay. And this is a business case. And we reckon that would cost about another 50,000. So we're looking at really a total of about 100,000 pounds to find out whether a railway can actually be constructed and whether it would pay. And so this is what we've, the, the last thing we've done is to go back to the local authorities and say, this is what we found. Will you support a, a full feasibility study? We've done the market research, but for the rest, would you, would you support it? And so we, we've had two consultations with local authorities, local businesses. And fortunately, in the, in the first one, we, we were only able to um, attract uh, people from Suffolk. But the second one, we had uh, members of the Cambridgeshire County Council and South Cambridgeshire District Council. And this was a great boost to us because previously Cambridgeshire seemed to be not interested at all in coming to Havehill, but now they are interested. And so we had this second consultation on the 7th of February this year. And the heartening thing about that was that when we, when we had uh, uh, St Edmundsbury, uh, Suffolk County, Haverhill Town Council, uh, um, uh, uh, Cambridge County Council and South Cambridgeshire and businesses, the thing that they all said, if we, anything is going to be done, we've got to cooperate. We've got to come together. One of these uh, on their own won't do anything. And so we have to cooperate. And, and that was the resolution at the end of the meeting. Now we're just awaiting for them to come together in more detail, the officers to come together and say whether they will support a full feasibility study or not. So friends, that is where we are at the present time. Um, now, I'm going to ask now our Secretary and Treasurer, uh, David Edwards, uh, uh, David uh, Better than me, he's a, he's a railway man. He's, lived, he's worked on the railways for ages. I've only travelled on it, but David has worked for the railways. He knows a lot more about it than I do. And uh, he's going to tell us about the, the wider reasons why we should have a railway between Haverhill and Cambridge, to begin with, anyway. So, please, David. Yes, I thank think. you. Good evening, all. Um, I'm going to give you a little um, brief outline of the history, the present day, and what we hope will take place in the future. Um, the railway from Sudbury to Cambridge, it was closed on the 6th of March 1967. And this apparently was three weeks, um, three weeks before the closure took place, Haverhill was designated to be scheduled for a vast increase in population. So there was always a question mark, that was a very wrong decision. Now, everybody blames Dr. Beeching for a lot of things that were wrong in the past. I mean, in hindsight, you can see mistakes were made. Railways should be open today that were closed in those days. But Dr. Beeching actually said, before he resigned as chairman of the British Railways Board, um, a recommendation that the railway through Haverhill should operate for another five years. That would take us up to 1970. Um, throughout this time, some lines that Dr. Beeching recommended for closure were reprieved. To give an example, Whitham to Braintree, I live in Braintree, so I know that story inside out. Ipswich to Lowestoft is another one that was reprieved. Um, Dr. Beeching, in the first instance, has said that so many miles of railway should be closed and so many stations should be closed. And I was on holiday one year, a few years later, and I bumped into a manager who used to work at Liverpool Street in the head office there. 
And he told me that there was a lot of aggravation that not enough railways had been closed as per Dr. Beeching's initial report and that they had to close one of three lines. And this man actually made the decision and he was given the job to close Manning Tree to Harwich or Peterborough to Stamford or Sudbury to Haverhill to Cambridge. And when they went through it, they wouldn't close Manning Tree to Harwich because Harwich has an international port. And they wouldn't close Peterborough to Stamford because now that's part of the main line that runs from Norwich to Liverpool. And clutching at straws, they closed Sudbury, Haverhill, Cambridge. And um, this was a very, very bad and unfortunate decision. Now, as Malcolm said, I've worked on the railway all my life. Um, if you want to know how long, 57 years. So I do know a lot of, has happened in the past. But late in 1967, I was working at King's Cross Mainline Station. And the then Minister of Transport, Barbara Castle, came to give us a talk. And the talk was about that in future, the government would give grant funding to any lost making lines. And Barbara Castle stood only three or four feet away from me. And I've actually got the very words that she said on that day. She was talking about the future would be brighter if, and more settled if lines losing money in those days um, would be given a grant. And these are her very words from the Minister of Transport. After all, we do not want to see any more mistakes as made with the closure of the line between Cambridge and Haverhill. Anything like this will become a thing of the past. But it was too late. I, I do say, had the Haverhill line remained open until 1970, it would still be open today. There would be a frequent daily service, and nowadays, with the advantage of no signal boxes along the line, and very few, if any, level crossings. So the cost of running the service would be greatly reduced. In addition to that, um, basically speaking, um, the frequent train service would generate far more passengers. Um, people say to me the distance between Haverhill to Cambridge is 18 and a quarter miles by the former railway, which was true. But what we must remember is we only need 15 miles to get to the former junction at Shen Shelford. And it's been brought to my attention that Heritage Steam Railways have built over that distance just by using volunteers. So these things can be done. Um, railways are needed today more than ever. And the figures that I received at a meeting in Ipswich recently um, prove that in the tax year or financial year 1994 to 1995, 735 million passengers used the railway. In the financial year ending 2013, April 2013, that figure had increased to 1,502 million pounds. And even in the paper today, they say just over this Easter break, over 8 million people are going to travel to friends and neighbours and out for the day, 8 million people by train. So there is a great demand for railways, more so in Haverhill than anywhere else. Um, the East Suffolk line that Mr. Dr. Beeching wanted to close, um, the number of passengers using it last year, 653,000. And um, last year's figure, 2013, was an 11.5% increase of the previous year, 2012. And the figures for that line are 60% up on 2009 to 2010 financial year. As far as Haverhill is concerned, there should be a bright spot on the horizon. We're now going to get the, tra the trains put back Oxford to Cambridge, which is in the process of being reinstated. There's a lot of talk and it's under review, Wisbeach, March, Cambridge. Um, and only today it was announced that um, the service from Cambridge to Stansted Airport is going to be increased to a half hourly service as opposed to an hourly service. Now this all um, in the future bodes very well for Haverhill. 
I just did a few calculations this morning. Um, by train, you could comfortably say, depending on stops, that you could reach Cambridge in 20 minutes. And using the present timetable, if you travel from Haverhill to Cambridge, you can connect easily with the train to London King's Cross and you can do the journey in one hour, 20 minutes. You're in London. That's um, only a very short time really after leaving Haverhill. You could do the same journey to Peterborough, change at Cambridge, one hour, 20 minutes the same. You could travel to Leicester, two hours, Birmingham under three hours. There's a lot of scope if we can only get linked into the national network. In fact, I worked out also, and I brought my continental timetable because people won't believe me, but from Haverhill, you could leave Haverhill at nine o'clock in the morning and you'd be in Geneva, Switzerland by half past six English time in the same evening. There's a lot of scope. And what I'd say moreover for Haverhill, if they can only get the trains to Cambridge, when you get to King's Cross, it connects with six London underground lines. King's Cross and Pancras is the best interchange for the underground. And you'd be one hour, 20 minutes away from that. You could travel all over London and to every other destination possible. People grumble about train fares sometimes. Um, but nowadays there's many special offers. I did find a book this week, this one here. Rover tickets throughout Great Britain and Ireland. And it even this, even from Cambridge, you can get an Anglia Plus for the Cambridge zone, which doubtless in the future would include Haverhill. You can get an Anglia Plus for the Suffolk and Cambridge zones. You can get one or three day unlimited travel tickets or a seven day unlimited travel tickets. In addition to that, you get group save over a lot of railways. Four go for the price of two, and, or three go for the price of two. And what people don't realise, season tickets, if you had a season ticket to Cambridge, and I spoke to 39 people one morning in, in Haverhill, and they all drove to Haverhill, and every one of the 39 said they'd use the train and have a season ticket, and sit and relax and read their newspaper, etc., etc. But with an annual season ticket, it gives you two months free travel. You only pay for 10 months, so if you have an annual season ticket. Now, we've had the trouble at Dawlish, and this was another mistake by Dr. Beeching. He closed the line between Oakhampton and Melbourne Quarry and Beer Alston. There's 20 miles missing from that alternative route. If that line had been kept, you could still have got to Cornwall and Devon and West Cornwall. Um, the severe s storm severed the main line at Dawlish and for two months there were no trains able to run direct to West Devon and Cornwall and it was a great loss to the local economy. But Haverhill has been severed now for 47 years and it's just not good enough. And when the Prime Minister went down to Dawlish he said on that morning that the first trains ran through on the 4th of April this month the railway in this country is part of our long-term economic plan to boost business and create more jobs in the regions involved. This applies, of course, to Haverhill. Um, to, to get by train to London King's Cross, London Underground, I'll question anybody the London Underground is the best metro service in the world. They've just had four lines completely refurbished with new spacious air-conditioned trains and um, the two million passengers a day with four or five years back is now four million a day. There's another 250 new underground trains being or going to be built for the Piccadilly um, Central and Bakerloo lines air-conditioned trains really good and um, at the moment Crossrail, the new underground railway going through London you'd be able to connect with that and it's now going to run to Reading and Haverhill would link into Crossrail in London. If the line's put back it would also be very beneficial for some freight trains through here. Um, 
Only four or five years ago, there were 16 freight trains leaving Felixstowe, having to go up to London and then back to the Midlands. They've now put in a separate line at Ipswich, so in future some of the trains can go via Barry St Edmunds. But now we're having 31 freight trains a day from Felixstowe, and that's liable to increase. And that's another reason the line from Colchester to Sudbury to Haverhill to Cambridge could be used for freight trains as well. There's a tremendous lot of advantage in having, you know, the railway put back. Uh, rail Future uh, is a national organisation uh, seeking to develop railways all over the country. And uh, his organisation has been very supportive of us. And I'd ask, ask Peter to uh, tell us why he thinks that we ought to have a railway from Haverhill to Cambridge. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Malcolm. I won't uh, detain you too long, I hope. Just to say that Rail Future is, as Malcolm says, a, uh, a voluntary group, national group. It's got branches all over the country, and I'm the chairman of the East Anglian branch based in Cambridge. And we've been working for many years to get various routes reopened. We don't, we don't say we have to roll the whole of beaching back because it's a different world between then and now, but certainly there are some routes which do need to be reinstated. The one we've been particularly working on for the last 20 years, and it is a long process, is the route that Malcolm mentioned between Cambridge and Oxford. Uh, again, it was shut just before, the, the, the day before, in fact, uh, Milton Keynes declared a new city, and now we've got Milton Keynes with a population approaching 300,000, and will soon be larger than Edinburgh, the people in Milton Keynes tell us, were uh, over 400,000. And so we've got Cambridge at one end of that route. Uh, now that one of the, uh, you know, 40 years on, 50 years on, nobody would imagine that Cambridge, Milton Keynes, Oxford would become the powerhouses of our national economy as it's changed from the heavy industrial uh, industries to brain-based industries, if you like. Uh, and Cambridge has changed into this very, very important uh, industrial centre, which is now leading uh, the sort of call for better transport links unless the whole uh, uh, unless the whole of the economy of Cambridge which the government is gradually realising it depends on will grind to a halt. Everybody wants to come to Cambridge. We've got East West, it took us 20 years, they've, they've funded and open, reopening the route all the way from Bedford to Oxford and beyond to, uh, beyond to the national network in the West and the idea is that the, Bedford, the section between Bedford and Cambridge, which is completely lost, uh, will be entirely rebuilt as a, a new railway on a new in alignment, probably going through St Neots, coming into West Cambridge. And the government announced that that, that line will be reopened to complete the east, so-called east-west route between Oxford and Cambridge. So we, by campaigning and keeping in there, it's a long-term process, things can be done. More locally, Wisbridge was mentioned in the north of Cambridgeshire, a town larger than uh, Haverhill at the moment, 33,000 people, we know that, because we delivered 13,000 leaflets, and I think I must have delivered most of them uh, from my sore feet, to every house in Wisbridge, and an average of three people in every house gives a, a much bigger population than uh, people realise, because a bit like Haverhill, it straddled borders, it straddles the Cambridgeshire and Norfolk border, uh, and Haverhill, of course, straddles Cambridge almost into Cambridgeshire, into a bit of Essex, and of course, mainly in Suffolk. So, um, the things are changing. We've now got Cambridge Station handling 10, uh, nearly 10 million, a footfall of nearly 10 million people every year. Trains that uh, operate out of Cambridge are incredibly full, as many of you will no doubt. Uh, realise when you've used the station there. And so we've got to the point where places like Wisbridge, which were once sort of laughed off the planet by, the, by politicians because, you know, you couldn't possibly reinstate 10 miles of railway, which is mothballed and, death, and already in existence, so it's too big a job. We can go, we can build a, a railway from Adelaide to Alice Springs and to, to Darwin in Australia for a, a kangaroo or two, but we can't do it for thousands of people in our own country. Very weird. 
but we've ch things are changing, and they are, will change for Haverhill too, because the, the latest county council plan, the uh, local, the, the long-term transport plan, published a couple of weeks ago, mentioned quite specifically uh, putting a high-quality uh, transport route back into, Cam into Haverhill from Cambridge. Now, I would argue that's a slightly dangerous uh, concept because it's uh, a, a high-quality transport route in, in their terminology could mean a guided busway. Now, nothing wrong with the guided busway in, in some ways. We campaigned for the St Ives line for many years, lost that one, got a guided, way, guided busway instead. But they have finite capacity, and it's already reached that capacity, and they don't quite understand, I'm sure, uh, how they're going to increase that capacity without lots of extra buses, which will be standing around doing uh, nothing for much of the day between the peaks. So. What I, we would say, uh, when we're looking at uh, a proposal to reinstate trains to a, a transport, a high-quality transport link between Haverhill and Cambridge, would would be along these lines. First of all, we would have to say what is the purpose of transport. So any proposal for a new investment must have a clear economic purpose, and that economic purpose must be to create jobs and help grow industry. It will give a choice to those people, those of us already making um, a journey to existing jobs rather than the car. We would perhaps have a train. It could improve their quality of life by doing so. Not forcing people to make this choice, but at the moment they haven't got a choice. Uh, it should improve access to education and learning, so, so important in developing uh, our future economy. It should um, improve access to leisure activities that are import an important part of the economy and our quality of life. Every improvement for the economy that supports our society supports us as individuals too. Those without access to cars will enjoy a freedom and independence currently denied them. Those with access to cars will have a high quality choice. This availability of choice will lead to other societal gains, fewer carbon emissions, less air pollution, fewer deaths and injuries on the road. I was struck on the bus today, coming from Cambridge to, to uh, Haverhill, that uh, we don't have uh, a scenic route, but we have a high casualty route to Haverhill, which I thought was a bit odd. Uh, most places boast about their scenery on their routes, but here we have, we're boasting, about, well, we're not boasting, I'm joking, of course, but it just makes the point, doesn't it? The current need, the 1307 is over capacity at travel to and from work times. This, has, this can be addressed by providing more road capacity, and in some places, this will be necessary. However, capacity at destinations such as Cambridge or even Haverhill itself will be difficult to provide and in some cases impossible to provide unless we want to knock down King's College or somewhere like that. It's not going to happen, is it? An alternative to road is also required and that can only be provided, in our view, by a high-quality railway in statement. A railway because of its ability to provide for volume and velocity. Our railway is now the most safe <coughs> form of transport in the world, and our own particular railway in this country is the safest in Europe. But it comes at a cost, of course. But it is safe, and we can carry 1,000 people in a train, like the new trains which will be introduced between Cambridge and King's Cross and under London in Thameslink to Gatwick Airport at a time at high speed, and no, everybody will be perfectly safe. No other mode can compare with that safety record. Remember that the population of Haverhill is set to rise to nigh on 40,000 people in the next, 14, uh, next 15 years, according to the LTTP I've just mentioned. There will be new settlements as well as extensions to those existing en route to Cambridge. Cambridge will continue its journey to becoming a major core city in this country, something we couldn't have imagined when Beeching closed all these routes down all those years ago. The nature of the jobs being created in and around Cambridge is such that high-end skills are called for. 
These skills tend to be dispersed rather than concentrated, so good, fast train services are needed to get the possessors of those skills to their workplace. Many such people travel from London each day to Cambridge and to places like Granter Park and Haverhill will need the railway network to get people it needs to work in its science parks if it ever uh, comes to pass. I travelled to Haverhill not long ago in the morning peak and of course the bus doesn't go by the railway station, although it could in Cambridge, uh, but it picked up about 20 young people who clearly just come from London and were going to Granta Park. Lots of people do these journeys, un unbelievable perhaps to lots of us, uh, to get to work. And so we've got to make it easy for it because these are the people who are providing the wealth of the nation in the future. So what will a railway provide for Haverhill? Haverhill, as we've just been told, is just 15 railway miles to Shelford Station on the Cambridge to London main line, Liverpool Street main line, and then two miles onto the site of the future Addenbrooke Station, which is mentioned in the LTP, LTTP uh, for construction in the next uh, five, ten years. And then one and a quarter more to Cambridge Station, which already handles nearly nine, uh, well over nine million people every year. That's about 30 odd thousand a day. It's so busy now that the Office of the Rail Regulator has enforced them to put an enforcement notice on them to keep the barriers open in the peaks because otherwise the crowds were so great and becoming so dangerous for people to get through the barriers by to put their tickets through that it's just not safe to do so. Now it's an open station in the morning peaks and all day Saturday, funnily enough, because it's even busier on Saturday. And then it's about two and three quarter miles on to, uh, uh, to uh, the Cambridge Science Park station, which is already funded and will be open in a couple of years' time. So that's 21 miles from Haverhill, all told, to the Cambridge Science Park station. And that's not really a transcon tran transcontinental railway we're trying to build, is it? It's 15 miles of new railway, which will give us complete uh, quick access to those three main hubs in, in this rapidly growing city. And of course, brings people out the other way, as I've just suggested, to Granter Park, to Linton, to, Abing uh, to um, Babram, etc., and Haverhill. It's worth reflecting at this point how long the current peak time, peak journey times are to those destinations. Buses are timetabled in the order of 20 to 30 minutes from Cambridge Station to the Science Park. And it can take up to an hour, regularly, 45 minutes to do so at the moment. Now, while I'm going through this, you'll come, I'll come back to the guided bus. So just to do those two miles I've just mentioned, takes up to an hour, and it does take an hour. The traffic in Cambridge is so awful, uh, it takes an hour to do those two miles. The train, when the tra railway train starts stopping there, in a couple of uh, years' time, will take two minutes to get from Cambridge Station to the, science, uh, to the new Science Park Station. The bus journey from, Cambridge to, from Haverhill to Cambridge takes over an hour off peak, and over an hour and a half to the science park requiring a, a change of bus. It will be less than 25 minutes by, by a, a modern train. The new railway will be well positioned to provide a high quality service from the important centres on the corridor, not only in the Cambridge direction to the three most important business hubs in the Cambridge region, and it will bring people fast to Granter Park, Abingdon, Linton, etc. I've just mentioned. The, this will make it a two-way flow in the peaks uh, to make the provision of such a high quality link financially viable. It will also have the potential, as we've just heard, for the line to be linked into a reopened railway beyond Haverhill as a route into Essex and Suffolk. 
This is just 16 miles further onto the existing railway at Sudbury, for example. This would make a direct railway route from Cambridge to Colchester and immensely improve the connectivity of Haverhill overall. But you know, we, I think the best idea is to stage these things. Don't go for the big bang because you won't get it. But uh, you know, always keep the ultimate in mind. Now, I mentioned the busway. I sent, but the St Ives busway is with us. It's successful in many ways. But it is a local, a local scheme. It's not in. It's not connected to the nas any national network. So what we would, what we, so you know, we're not arguing against that. What we're saying is that a railway is a part of a national network, and some of the distances mentioned earlier uh, are possible. A destination are possible. We believe it's essential that the route is is reopened as a railway rather than being converted into a section of the guided busway. The guided busway is limited, as it is impossible to provide a guideway along the streets. Thus, congestion will remain in the urban core of Cambridge. The existing southern guided busway from Cambridge Station to Addenbrookes cannot take double-decker bus, for, uh, for example, owing to the very low underpass under Hills Road, which was instructed at immense cost um, uh, when the southern busway was opened. We emphasise that the railway exists from Shelford to the Science Park, an invaluable asset to Haverhill. Already it's there, an invaluable asset, uh, and places en route to Shelford Junction, and Haverhill must make its claim to use that section of railway. As we've heard also, the railways around Cambridge are filling up rapidly, and so we want to get this railway in uh, here before uh, they become over capacity. Already the line from Ipswich to Bury and Newmarket is down for half hourly service. I mean, since the growth on that route is phenomenal. Uh, Berry Station now is handling well over 500,000 people a year and the growth uh, towards Cambridge just shows the importance of Cambridge on, on that route. Initial stations with supporting park and ride uh, must be planned for Haverhill, Linton and Abingdon, uh, Abington, I should say, keep saying done, for Granter Park and any associated new housing in that area. Only a modern electrified railway is capable of getting from Haverhill to the Science Park in the 25 minutes I mentioned, 20, 25 minutes, and vice versa. So the time has come for the people of Haverhill uh, to determine what sort of future they want for their town, or your town, I should say. Should it continue, should you continue to live in the largest town in East Anglia without a rail railway service? Do you wish forever to be at the mercy of movements of world oil price prices, oil prices and the cost of road fuel? Or do you want to be a stranded community with none of the mobility benefits that people in similar towns take for granted? Or do you want to grasp the opportunity that Malcolm's work um, has created to claim your share of the nation's economy? Oh, I know I would vote for Malcolm any day. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Jeff Smith. Yes, um, sir. I'm as I am using the microphone, but uh, I think it's admirable what all three of these gentlemen have done so far, uh, and in particular the chairman. Um, one or two questions. Um, I, I, well, one is a statement. I believe an opportunity was lost when the station site was given over to Tesco because I would have thought were, with a bit of persuasion that Tesco's could have made some contribution to your project. After all, if the railway station had been built, reconstructed on that site, the footfall through Tesco's would have been tremendous. The focus on Haverhill to Cambridge worries me a little. 
uh, in as much as it doesn't include London and it doesn't include Stansted Airport. If you're looking for funding, I would have thought it would have been appropriate to have included both of those. Can I answer that a little bit? Um, the other thing is, and it does worry me, is the project I'm worried about the, the overhead cables, the dueling of the track. I would have thought in the initial stages a link as exists between Mark's Tay and Sudbury. Single track run by diesel rail cars with, uh, you could provide a, an adequate service with passing places. Um, but you're gonna, you're gonna realize a lot of objections to these overhead cables, I'm sure, yeah. from local residents, farmers, um, that's it really. Um, and have you considered opening up the route through to Wendon Zamba? So could you just explain where that is please? Or the end. Or the end. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thanks very much for those yeah. comments. Thank you. Can I, uh, you please, no, sorry. Yes, Peter, could I perhaps answer uh, uh, um, uh, Jeff Smith? About, uh, uh, well, um, if, if I can just say about funding, I mean, Cambridge is a logical one because that's where people work. In the, and there is funding, it would appear, it's, it's a it's a bit opaque at the moment, but it does seem that through the city deal that Cambridge is uh, in the process of being uh, uh, negotiating with the government, where, whereby it keeps some of it, the revenue raised rather than going to the Treasury, uh, transport projects for this will be funded. Now, East West might well be funded to Bedford, but uh, uh, the County Council is quite keen on Havel, so you where, where, although it's not in Cambridgeshire, but main, main, most of the route is, and much of the traffic coming into Cambridge from this direction comes from Havel, so that's why they're interested. So really it's best to concentrate where the money might be and where obviously the traffic is. Now we're going to London, of course, you could change at Shelford, you could be to, uh, you could go to, um, you'd be to Shelford in, you know, it's 15 miles, 15 minutes, and then, of course, you take up whatever, or go to Cambridge, it's 45 minutes to London. Uh, so, you know, going to Cambridge wouldn't be that bad, but, I mean, where, where as time goes on, you, there might be the possibility of extension, say, down to Stansted, or, as I said, across to Sudbury, or even, as you, you suggested, through Saffron Walden to Audley End Station, when, when the Zambo, or Ambo, when, I don't know which way is it. But... Uh, Rail cars are very sh in short supply. The government is moving away from diesel for the same reasons that diesel is uh, uh, getting diesel rail cars. Are there, like any diesel vehicle, it's highly polluting and, th and they're trying to move away from anything that uh, pollutes the atmosphere, apart from the, uh, you know, oil security and all the rest of it. And elect electric traction is by far the cheapest. And I think mo most in most uh, low people, you might well object to the wiring. A single track, I think, might be adequate with passing loops. In modern railways, easily controlled from central point. In fact, the whole nation's railways will be soon uh, controlled from just 14 points, I think. Uh, Cames will be, signal box will go. It's going down, migrating to London. And so, you know, it will be signaled from a, a place in, in London if it's ever open, Haverhill will be, and you know, the, the overhead wires will soon disappear back into the countryside. I don't think anybody noticed them. The network in Cambridge is entirely electrified it's at the moment, more or less. So, Thank you very much, Peter. But, I mean, your opinion is an important one, of course. Yeah. Anthony Carpen here from, uh, from Cambridge. I came on the bus as well, and this is my first time here, here with Puffles, my Twitter dragon. Um, who joined me in, uh, in Whitehall. I used to work in the civil service. Puffles is followed by 20 members of parliament and the director of rail at the Department for Transport, which is not bad for a cuddly toy. Um, one of the, I mean, there are a number of really big opportunities from a Cambridge perspective linking Haverhill up to Cambridge. Um, 
One of them is Linton and Haverhill have got far better leisure centres than we've got in Cambridge. And a railway station would be fantastic because it could mean we could access them. Um, from a citizenship perspective, in particular with young people, in my neighbourhood we've got Long Road Sixth Form College and Hills Road Sixth Form College. A number of students from between Haverhill to Cambridge use that number 13 bus on a very regular basis. Is there an opportunity for the campaign to start working with local schools, in particular those children who are going to go on to Hills Road, Long Road, CRC, to get involved with this campaign and in particular using, start creating content using social and digital media, because that's how me and Puffles found out about it. You put it on your Facebook page and we thought, oh, we'll come along. Um, can you use this as a really exciting and inspiring case study to get young people interested, not just in engineering and the railways, but also in terms of local and national democracy. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Very useful. Thank you. I live in Haverhill, well, but I now commute to London, so for me, that having that line in place would be very useful. But following on from what this gentleman said here, as Tesco's is built on the current, as the from the previous station site, where would the where would the station be now be located to? if the line has been stated. Yeah, the question is, uh, where would the station be now that uh, Tesco site has been uh, put out of court, as it were? Um, we, we, uh, we have envisaged that should the line go right through to Sudbury, then it may be uh, right to take the line uh, uh, near to the bypass, the southern bypass. And therefore, a station may be somewhere near Hazel Stub, or, or alternatively, of course, uh, at uh, near Sainsbury, so at that, uh, that end of the town. But uh, this would, would largely depend on, on, you know, the intention of exactly how far the railway should go, and of course, the availability of, of sites. This is this detail is something that you know the local authorities have obviously would have to work work out. But. Uh, um, we feel that maybe to go to go south of the town, there would have to be obviously a park and uh, you know a large car park there, so that people could 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 um, could access the, the the station from all parts of Haverhill by minibuses etc. But um, that that uh, well, or the, of course things are changing in Haverhill. Maybe it, it should go to the to the north of Haverhill. I don't know, but uh, th this is something I say can only be determined by. By the local authorities, engineers, and uh, and their uh, their planners. Can I come back yes, on yes. Facebook? Yes, yes, please. Sir. Um, I mentioned earlier that we conducted a campaign in Wisbech, uh, and we got a huge response. We had an online um, petition, which in a very short time gathered something like four thousand signatures online. We've realised that, of course. Lots of people felt left out because we reckon in Wisbridge at least, 20% of people were, did not have access to a, a computer or, any, or an iPad or whatever, or unable to use it. So we put lots of paper petitions in. But it's, we also went on Facebook and that created was tremendously good for getting interest. And if you go to Wisbridge Rail, it's... Uh, it's just all one word, Wisbridge Rail on Fort Facebook or uh, on Twitter. It is a very important medium, as the, as the gentleman suggested, for getting young people in particular. Uh, you know, there's, there's about 700 likes of, um, on Facebook, for example. And so it's a very uh, you know, interactive way of communicating the idea. Uh, we presented the petition, and I think that's something it's got to come up from the people nowadays. It shouldn't be top down because if it's top down, nothing will happen because you've, you know we've had 40 years of nothing happening. So it's got to come up from the bottom. It's got to come up through a petition like Malcolm's done already, but we've got to use that petition more very effectively. Uh, the MPs do take uh, uh, note of petitions more and more nowadays. We presented our petition, our full petition, to the county council, to the full new county council, in June this year, and it had a very dramatic effect. So, from the Wisbridge 
but they've had 40 years also without a railway, and it's really rank, it's ranker, rancorous in the town that really the the way people feel let down by not having this link out into the national network. The schools feel their children are inward looking. They have no exposure. They can't get to Cambridge. They can get to Peterborough uh, on the bus maybe, but it's not the same as going out on the train somewhere and exploring your environment further afield. So the schools have, and the colleges in Wizards are very keen, and I expect the same will be here, uh, to get an easy way for the kids to get out into places like Cambridge and come back safely in the evening, etc. Um, and we must use uh, every method, mode available to us to get this message to our politicians. This is something that we want, um, and we can only show that perhaps by having a petition. Yes. Yeah, John McDonough, member of the public. Yeah, I lived at Walton on the night for about 12 years. And Walton nice to Thorpe, it's about three miles long on the railway link. That train runs for every half hour, it's packed solid at a seaside place. He waits up Thorpe for the Clacton train to come. The time has got to Liverpool Street, that train you've got standing room only. So it does work. The same as the young gentleman said here about it, all the way down to London. It's not just to London, this is a main route to the Midlands. So it could be big business for us. I can't understand why we haven't got a railway thing. Yes. So what was the place you mentioned at first you were talking about? Walton on the Nays. Walton on the Nays? Yeah. 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 Yes, right. Most of these side places. Yeah. And they communicate there to London. By the time you got to Liverpool Street, that train has got standing room only. That's right. Yeah, sure. So it does, it does work. And so from Morton on the next to Thorpe, it's about three miles long. Yes. As soon as you get to Thorpe, it waits for the Clacton train, they hook up, they carry the train on. Colchester, all the way through. Yeah. And it's solid, so it does work. This town is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You've got Stansted Airport. You can do in London 15 minutes in a lorry. So I don't know what the, you can do it in a car. But we are the main route here to the Midlands as well. It's not just going to Cambridge, it's going to the Midlands as well. Absolutely, oh yes, indeed. And it would bring a lot of business in this town. Yes, well, uh, thank you for that point, because um, some of the business people uh, do feel that uh, the, the railway wouldn't be much use for business. But, uh, as you say, other people realise that it, it would be, because as soon as, as, soon as you have the connection, to, uh, to, to A, B and C, then you, you have the possibility of people c uh, wanting to sell their produce or transport it, then you, 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 you can begin and it builds up then, yes, certainly. Yeah, I mean, if you go from Cambridge to Darwin, then you're right in the middle of, you're right in the centre of England. Absolutely, you? that's right, indeed, yes. Hi, um, I'm uh, Graham Newman, I'm from Suffolk County Council. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, where I'm a cabinet member for roads and transport and I've been following the fortunes of this group for some years now so I'm sort of a bit of an enthusiast as well to be <coughs> frank but what I want to try and do is to point to you what's happened with two important projects which do affect our region and I think illustrates what the gentleman in the front was saying actually we've got to really raise the game here if we're going to get what we want in terms of rail uh, hey, rail connected to the railway system. On, on Monday this week, I was very privileged to travel in uh, Network Rail's um, inspection saloon <coughs> from Stratford, up the line here to Cambridge, then round to Dunningham, uh, Bury St Edmunds, Stone Market, and round the new Ipswich Court. Right? So when we were at Shelford Junction, I saw you know, the track bed of the former railway running away there to the sort of southeast as it does. So it's sort of very much in my mind. And actually, there was a, a network rail project manager on the train. <coughs> I said to him, um, what do you think about the possibility of reconnecting Haverhill to the national rail system? And he just turned his nose up, really. He didn't really have an answer. And that's because that's not in, they call it control periods, how they spend their money. They've just got a finalized control period between 2014 and 2019. 
Let there be another one called Control Period 6, which is 2019 on for the next six years. And people are already divvying up proposals that they want to go into that CP6 period. Not least of which is electrifying the line from Felixstowe all the way to Dunning. So, um, I mean, that's a big project, that's probably about £300 million pounds worth of electrification. And we're probably talking about the same sort of money, I think, with this project, because of course it's, it's going to be pretty well all brand new. But I think, uh, Mr Hill, it's a question of really taking a leaf out of what's happened. Um, on the other side of the county, we've got this Norwich to London in 90 proposal. What's happened there is that local authorities have come together with the members of parliament and, and importantly, uh, the, the way government is now dishing money out in, into the regions, uh, organisations called Local Enterprise Partnership. <coughs> uh, they are, are, are strongly represented by the business. So my suggestion is really we've got to get councils to try and protect the route because somebody mentioned earlier on what happens if you build some more houses at Linton or somewhere like that, uh, which gets in the way of, of, of a straight line for the railway, that would be a big embarrassment. <coughs> it was because the route was protected at Ipswich, uh, between Westerfield and, and, and Needham Market, that they've been able to build this cove quite recently, only because uh, 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 the, the, the borough council at Ipswich designated that land some years ago, and you know it's finally come to fruition. But, on the Norwich to London in 90 project, suddenly all the people who are interested in doing this have come together. And remarkably, they have spoken with one voice. You know, we've not got one group of people saying we want to do it this one way. Um, we've not got people from Essex like Pretty, uh, Pretty Patel, who's a member of Parliament for Whitton. Uh, she's very keen on seeing this done. But of course, they get again as well, further down the line towards London, if we get Norwich to London. <coughs> 90, we're going to hopefully get um, uh, Ipswich to London in 60 and, and, and probably Colchester to London in 40 and so on as you go down the line. And of course the big game there will be getting new rolling stock. Now that's not currently on the cards because we're in a very short franchise with our railway operator but it's something we can ask for for next time and there's high hopes that we actually will get it. But it's because <coughs> you've got business, <coughs> members of parliament, councils, enthusiasts people like you here in Haverhill, all coming together and saying, we want this thing. And I'm absolutely convinced that's exactly what's happened with the East-West Rail project. You know, there's been a lot of people around in groups like this, you know, 20 years ago, were thinking about East-West Rail, what a wonderful thing that would be to get the, the old varsity route reintroduced. And it was, it was sort of, you know, a catalytic effect was um, people who operate the Maribyrn to, to Birmingham service saying, well, we'd like to connect our line with the line that comes from Oxford up to Vista. That was the start of it. It's called the Evergreen Project. But now, you know, when you go across the, you know, the old Oxford to, to, to Vista line, it's all being cleared. You know, this great big embankment being built down, down to the other line, and the line itself all being cleared as far as the eye can see at, uh, at Vista. So that project has come to fruition. And it's the same thing. It's the members of parliament coming together with the local authorities, coming together with the enthusiasts, coming together with town councils along the route who are bringing that forth. Um, I think that if, if you've got the energy, I mean, certainly I will commit what I can from, from, from Suffolk, not so much in terms of cash, but in trying to sort of facilitate these sorts of actions. So we get the people together, we get the local enterprise partnership um, on side, and that means getting the business people of Haverhill on site to say this is really worth doing because it'll make things better for us and, and also the people who work here and live here and want to study elsewhere in Cambridge, go to the Midlands, whatever it is. Let's build a business case. It's only through doing that that we will get the eye of government and we'll get the money um, invested in this part of the world. But I, I think it's eminently doable because we've seen from East West Rail it's doable, we've seen from Norwich to London in 90 it's doable, we've seen even with the Ipswich call to get that piece of railway um, uh, sort of installed and working. It's all about coming together, getting all the people who are going to benefit from it, making the case solidly, and I think actually the present um, government is very interested in making that sort of thing happen. So that's my contribution. Thank you.
just a couple of points. Sorry, your name, please. Page, J Page. J Page. A couple of points. There was a couple of stories in the Cambridge in the news tonight which are relevant. One was about the guy in Busway saying that every single part of it was going to have to be replaced because of problems with the concrete <coughs> track. Yeah. Another point that's in the Cambridge in the news was three options for improving the road link between Haverhill and Cambridge to 1307. All apparently endorsed by our local MP, which none of which I think was a dual carriageway, a guided busway, or some other option, which he apparently endorsed all of them. I mean, and someone had raised the point that surely people would rather have a, a single track railroad than a dual carriageway motorway coming between Hayden and Hayden at Linton and places. Yes. Where does our local MP stand with regard to this project? Because after all, he's a member of Cabinet. He's I mean, they, they build this HS2 thing, so they, they could do with some practice putting some railway line somewhere. Why not here? Yeah. You know, <laughs> so Thank you very much indeed. Well, uh, uh, I must say that, um, yes, what were we saying? Mr. Uh, uh, Matthew Hancock d did come to the consultation, second consultation, and he was. Yeah, and he was no quite he, and he was very supportive uh, uh, and uh, it's just that uh, we've got to as councillor newman says we, we've got to try to get all them all everybody together to 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 find out exactly what can be done and, uh, and if if we can, if if more than one authority come together more businesses come together then i think we shall break through and uh, mr hancock i think will be persuaded by those people so another, yes, another they quoted a figure, I can't remember the figure offhand, but that was to, to do all this bit of road, which is about seven miles, was 25 million. Surely that would go a long way in terms of the cost of putting. I mean, how does it compare the motorway mile to rail mile? And Can I? Yes, please. Uh, I, I don't know. I think we've got to start thinking big figures for anything to do with transport. I was astounded the other day to learn a, a 500 metre section of ordinary road in Huntingdon had come out at £10 million. That's for 500 metres. So I think we're sort of talking in that sort of ball, you know, that kind of area. Anything to do with transport is big bucks. You don't get much bang. So. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, please. Hi, Wendy Norris. Um, if it's a long-term project, um, you really need to get, like the gentleman at the front said, the um, young people involved. So you need to get the schools involved and, and get the schools along the routes, the proposed route involved, so they can run your social media site, your website. You know, as, as you know, get getting all the different types of, of kids involved along the route at different ages. Um, thoroughly recommend that because you you. you are going to get to a point where it can actually um, be almost be self-funding and, and be looked after. And the second point is get the landowners on your side, otherwise you could get the funding and actually be blocked by a landowner who's not going to let you um, reinstate the route. So I definitely recommend getting the landowners for both the station, proposed station site and the route online, otherwise it will just get stuck and you've done all that effort and um, you won't be represented. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, speaking on behalf of the uh, of the rail project, uh, we we do thank you all very much for coming tonight and uh, um, uh, and um, listening and talking and this, in this way we can learn so much and have so much that will will help us to to complete this this project. It will take a long time, but you've got to start somewhere, and we're we're starting. Um, now, uh, sometimes, as, you, as you, if you listen to any questions on the BBC radio with Jonathan Dimbleby, he asks for a, uh, a straw poll, as it were, of the people who are present. Do you, would you vote for the railway or would you vote against the railway? So I think it would be worthwhile for us to, uh, to do this. And if somebody can count, uh, that, would, that would be helpful. Yeah. Um, so could I ask, please, for people to put up their hands if they would support the... Uh, the reinstating of a railway between Haverhill and Cambridge. Those in favour? Can anybody count, please? One, two, three, four, uh, can I, can, would you mind saying who won? Because it looks to me like it's yeah, unanimous. There's 50, 50 yeah. people here. Okay, right. Who, will, who doesn't want the railway? <laughs> right, it's, it's unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, can, I, can I just say one? Yes, there. one more, Peter, please. Uh, very good. But. Uh, some years ago, we had a meeting like this in St Ives in Cambridgeshire, where I think to our amazement, 400 people turned out on a dark, windy night to a debate, busway or railway. 
the county council was proposing a busway, we were sort of saying, well, maybe not. And we then had a straw poll. Out of those 400, two people said they did not want, well, well two, everybody said they wanted the railway, and everybody, uh, two people said they wanted a busway. So beware. Unanimous for a railway here, but you know, don't, don't hold your breath because uh, there's, there are forces at work. <laughs> Just to follow, follow up on that point, um, I used to work in the civil service in uh, community development policy as well as on climate change policy, with, uh, again with this little bundle of fun next to me. Um, one of the big game changers that has happened in the past few years is the way society is now using social and digital media. But it's taking the institutions, and in particular the political institutions, um, a long time to catch up. One of the things I do now is I do social media training for some of those uh, institutions. There are elections coming up, and many, uh, and then more and more of your political parties and your candidates are opening social media profiles on Facebook, on Twitter, and their own blogs. One of the things I'm encouraging people to do in in Cambridge in particular, young people, and in particular those that don't have the vote, is to try out some digital democracy. Throw lots and lots of questions on the issues that you're passionate about, in particular something like Hayville to Cambridge, and see what the answers are, and then share those answers with people. Make sure that whoever is standing in your area, and this is not a party political point, this is about getting more people interested in how local decisions are taken in your area, basically to say to them that actually if you don't get involved in stuff like this, it's going to cost you at the ballot box. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good point. Thank you. Chairman, well, can you ask how many are willing to become members? Yes, I'm sure. Um, <clears throat> now, where are the membership forms? Do, 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 yeah, we've got them here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, here we are. Now then, uh, friends, um, <clears throat> It is possible to become a member of the rail project. Um, um, it would cost you £10 per year, or if you ha uh, haven't got a wage coming in, £5 a year. So we have forms uh, which you can take away with you tonight and fill in and, uh, and uh, join the rail project. That would be very, very good indeed. Secondly, we have our next meeting of our project here in... Uh, in this building, actually in the studio, uh, on Thursday the 5th of June. Thursday the 5th of June at 7 o'clock in the evening. So uh, if uh, you have a diary and you like to come to that meeting, you're very, very welcome. We are a democratic organisation in that we, we, we have it's one person, one vote, uh, and, uh, and uh, so that, that, that is how we make our decisions. So please do come along. But, once again, I do thank you very much for giving your time tonight, and I hope you will tell other people uh, what you've heard and uh, advocate that we should have a railway uh, in, through Haverhill to Cambridge and Colchester so that we can join in the whole nation. But thank you very much once again for coming. Thank you. <laughs>